Welcome to Electromex video on 10 years of aircraft EWIS regulations and requirements, the consequences, both the intended and unintended, of their implementation. This presentation was originally developed back in June 2019 for the U.S. Air Force's Mechanical Equipment and Subsystems Integrity Program Conference, or, or MEXIP Conference. And this presentation was really developed to help identify some of the work that had been done in the commercial segment and how the regulations associated with it have been impacting overall fleet design and, and maintenance. And so in this presentation, we'll go through some of that, talk about what EWIS is, the regulations, a review of the industry, and the both the design impacts and maintenance impacts from a positive and negative um, viewpoint. The first thing we want to go through here is to talk about who Electromech is and why kind of why we're giving this presentation. We are a small business that specializes in the certification of aircraft wiring systems and components. We work at the component testing level for component verification and qualification, the EWIS certification at the OEM level, and the remaining life prediction for the remaining service life of, of wiring on vehicles. We work with every major aircraft wire producer in the US, and we are an ISO 17025 accredited lab. In terms of key areas that we have worked on, we've helped develop specialized software tools for the FAA to identify wiring system risk assessment. We performed a first of its kind EWIS risk assessment on an aging aircraft, and we'll have a link to the paper below the video here. And we have been supporting the US Navy's F-18 fleet with their service life extension of and the evaluation of EWIS uh, for uh, quite some time now. And we've been providing a reliable service life prediction uh, for multiple parts of their fleet. So to first start off with, the start this presentation, and I think many of the people that will be watching this video are familiar with this concept, but for those that are not, I want to make sure we understand and specifically identify what EWIS is. According to the FAA, EWIS is the Electrical Wiring Interconnect System, and it means any wiring, wiring device, or combination of these, including termination devices, installed in any area of an airplane for the purposes of transmitting electrical energy, including data and signals. And if you look at this little figure here, this is representative of a form board. And you can see that this, this includes the clamps, bundle ties, connectors, splices, cables, contacts for connectors, and secondary harness protection. This, for many, might be the view of EWIS, that it's really the wiring that goes between the connective devices and the LRUs. But EWIS also includes circuit protection, relays, and means of transmitting electrical energy from one place to another. For the DOD, EWIS also includes fiber optic, but for the purposes of this presentation, uh, we're going to focus on the copper conductor type EWIS, where there's actually a transmission of electrical energy. With that said, you know, how do we get here? What is the timeline of EWIS? So the first wiring installation standard was built was originally created under mill standard 5088 and this was first published in 1951 this is not something wiring system design and guidance is not something new that's come come around in the last decade but there's been a long development to this uh, as you see here this is identified as the era of fit and forget for a lot of aircraft, the wiring was built, placed into the aircraft, and likely never to be touched again. At least that's the, that was the, the idea, that you place it in there, fit and forget the wiring system. As we move forward through time, we see that there was plenty of events that um, involved the wiring system, wiring technologies developed. But really the two areas that, two events that changed how EWIS was looked at, changed how wiring systems were looked at, um, were the TW 800, TWA 800 incident and Swissair 111. These two incidents 
created a momentum for a change in EWIS regulations to create the idea of EWIS, of wiring as a system. And so we transition from this era of fit and forget to the era of EWIS, where that wiring system is really being considered. And as we move forward, the ideas of more electric aircraft, uh, all electric aircraft, they start to come into the overall design of the wiring system. Um, but to jump back to the end of 2007, the FAA released 17 EWIS regulations, and they cover and they cover areas like system safety, separation, and instructions for continued airworthiness. These regulations have been in place for over a decade and have started to impact the wiring system design and maintenance. And that's kind of what we were looking at here and what we'll be covering with the rest of this presentation. Those regulations have been in place since really 2008. And to determine the impact of these regulations, Lectromec surveyed lead engineers from dozens of organizations, both commercial and military segments, and asked two questions. What is the largest impact, both positive or negative, that EWIS regulations have had on design? And we asked the same question about maintenance and sustainment. With these questions, we, we posed them to uh, dozens of engineers, senior level engineers, more than 25 years of working experience in aerospace, with at least half that time working on electrical systems. And those people had a very thorough understanding of EWIS. Um, they represented defense OEMs, Part 23 and Part 25 OEMs, and commercial operators. So there was a very broad group of people that were surveyed as part of this work. We jump into the impact on design. So we're going to start with the design impact and the positives. First positive that many of the engineers identified was that the EWIS regulations created a robust set of requirements which really placed the need for a robust set of verification plans. The system requirements are obviously identified and addressed through the design process. And what many of the engineers identified as being uh, a fantastic consequence of this is that because it's part of the certification requirement, time is now being allocated to address the US factors such as space management, routing, and separation distances. Historically, these were areas that were um, thought of later in the process, and many times EWIS had to just deal with the space they, they were given. Now, there is actually time taken early in the process to ensure that the separation distances and space management are allocated. Next, the EWIS design is better traced through the vehicle. Obviously, with a greater emphasis on EWIS, means that there's a greater emphasis on EWIS design repeatability. Um, this comes down to a little bit more of that risk assessment. If you're able to identify that the wiring needs to always be at least three inches from, say, a fuel tank, well, you're going to ensure that the design and the routing of that harness is inspected and verified as part of the construction process. And this means that there is a greater likelihood that there is going to be a repeatable routing and design of the EWIS through the vehicle. Another great benefit that a lot of the engineers pointed to is that engineering is now taking ownership of EWIS issues. For a lot of them, they saw that historically the issues had been pushed back and forth between various engineering groups. This is something that Electromech has seen in several OEMs, and we've also seen that in several fleet maintainers, whereas some groups would place the ownership on avionics, some would place it on the electrical distribution system. Finally, there is a single group that is being addressed and being tasked with being on the hook to address wiring issues. Beyond that, EWIS engineers are now becoming system-level thinkers, that they're now considering the impacts at the harness level, co-location of redundant systems, and really bring in, bringing in that risk assessment, those higher level concepts into the EWIS design. Now, with those being the positives, we also have some negatives to, to go with this. 
there is a high impact for implementation of, of the EWIS the first time. A lot of paperwork is generated, and one regional jet manufacturer said that roughly 20 man years of labor, or 40,000 hours, were devoted to EWIS certification paperwork. Now that's a huge cost, and there's certainly a huge cost of U.S. compliance is not considered early. Just as you would think about it for a, a hydraulic system, if you were to start evaluating a hydraulic system late in the design pro in a design process, obviously there will be costs associated with that. The same thing happens with EWIS. Certainly, a recent example of this is the KC46. According to the publicly available information on this on this aircraft, there, the wiring issues that they ran into great, were due to separation distances, poor shielding, and lack of separation of redundant systems. The claims were that the wiring affected was about 10% of the aircraft wiring, and the overall cost to the project was over $270 million. Now that might be there might have been other areas that were involved that led to the, the delay of that vehicle, but that's was publicly not known on that vehicle, and a lot of it was directed towards the wiring system. So now we focus on the impact at the maintenance level. And just as with design, we're going to start with the positives. The maintenance impact has been for, from a lot of the, the operators who are now operating under the new EWIS requirements, they identified that the instructions for continued airworthiness and the enhanced zonal analysis process have highlighted EWIS across, this, across the, the organization. This has helped to identify areas of shortcomings for both the electrical personnel and non-electrical personnel. And this has been very important to them because when you think of a you know, structures or say hydraulics, uh, they're going to be working around the wiring system, and and certainly if they know what are the limitations, what are things bad things that can happen when they improperly handle the wiring system, that helps to identify it early. It helps for them to perhaps avoid creating those scenarios to begin with, and obviously report any issues that they they create during maintenance actions. And certainly operators have found less damage due to EWIS and non-EWIS maintenance actions by informing their personnel of what, what really EWIS is and the susceptibility of damage that, that the wiring system has. The instructions for continued airworthiness have regimented EWIS evaluations and are now part of the life cycle of the vehicle. And we do have a article there on the instructions for continued airworthiness. It really does a I think gives a great overview of what needs to be considered for an EWIS evaluation. One area that goes hand in hand with those instructions and training the personnel is advocating the clean as you go concept. This is the idea that as you come across EWIS, if it's um, contaminated or, or dirty, clean it up. Ensure that Drill shavings don't work their way into bundles. Obviously, if you're cleaning up the wiring system on a regular basis, this reduces the potential flammable contaminants and reduces wire insulation damage deep in the bundle. Now, if you consider a 70 wire harness, about 80% of the surface of those wires is not visible on the outside of that wire harness. And so, there's only 26 wires on the surface, and you can't see every part of them. And if you have metal shavings working into the harness, there's 80% of the, the wiring that can be damaged without actually being visible. And so by ab advocating this clean-as-you-go process, it helps to reduce the introduction of these contaminants to the wiring harness. Now, to quote one major U.S. commercial operator, they said, we still have plenty of disruptions due to wiring issues, but likely not as much as prior to implementing EWIS. They have experienced higher aircraft availability and spend less time on EWIS troubleshooting. And 
obviously bring that all together, considering this for an aging vehicle, for any operator. And the most important part is certainly this reduced maintenance costs. Now, part of the negatives. If we go back to some of those requirements that the FAA placed on, on new designs, it, they involve ensuring that there's separation considerations, system safety separations, and fuel tank ignition prevention considerations. From a maintainer's point of view, it is very difficult or nearly impossible to ensure that any changes made to the wiring system remain in compliant with those regulations. They don't have access to all that information. It is very difficult to get that. Um, obviously, you can work with the OEMs to get some of it, but after years of changes, some of that will be very difficult to acquire. When a new system is deployed, obviously those questions have to be asked. Are the wire harness temperatures handled correctly? Is the wire harness being derated? Uh, system separation, physical separation, all those areas need to be considered and puts a heavy burden on any modifier of a vehicle. With increased complexity of EWIS, the maintainers do not understand how to handle it. When you think about all the areas that wiring system has become more complicated, the introduction of secondary power system uh, distribution, secondary power system distribution, high frequency cables, EMI sensitive components that can't be troubleshot with simply using a multimeter. These are all, all areas that are making the EWIS a lot more complicated than they used to be 30, 40 years ago. And to quote a DOD OEM, the, the maintainer's lack of EWIS knowledge is crippling military aircraft. These additional tasks that are placed on maintainers are a burden for them to handle because for a lot of these organizations, there is little time to ensure that they know how to handle them. If you have a maintainer go out and he's instructed to troubleshoot a complex, redundant secondary power distribution system, it's not a simple take an uh, ohm meter or a multimeter and try to identify if there's any shorts in that system. There's far more attached to it. There's far more branching of the system, and a lot of things need to be considered. So for, for a final three points here, three takeaways that I hope you have here is that the wiring system has has a wire. <clears throat> the three main takeaways here that I hope you remember following this presentation is that the wiring as a system has had both negative and positive impacts on aircraft design and maintenance. The EWIS analysis of new designs has made wiring systems more reliable, and without a doubt, they are certainly more maintainable. And, and lastly, while there is a cost associated with full EWIS evaluations, the cost impact is mitigated within, when you're considering the improved fleet performance. And also, if tools such as Electromex software tools of the Arc Damage Modeling Tool, the EWIS risk assessment, and some of our aging platform evaluation tools are considered and can be implemented to directing maintenance actions. These are all things that you can find out more about on Lettromech.com. If you have any questions, uh, my email address is right here. Feel free to give us a call, and we look forward to hearing your feedback. Thank you for your time.